Hi, I'm Robert Santana, registered dietitian and starting strength coach. I also am the moderator of the Nutrition and Recovery Board on startingstrength.com. One of the most common questions I get is how much protein powder should somebody take or what type of protein powder should somebody take to optimize their muscle protein synthesis. So why don't we just talk about what that is first. So when you lift weights and you apply overload, you break down your muscles and they have to rebuild. So there have been several papers on this in academic liter literature where they look at what happens immediately after you work out. And what happens immediately after you work out is your muscles are broken down and you get an increase in protein breakdown and an increase in protein synthesis. And the question that was raised was, are different types of proteins going to influence that differently, more or less? And this has been studied for the last 20 years. And they've looked at whey protein concentrate versus whey protein isolate versus milk protein isolate versus soy protein isolate and probably many more. And the general consensus has been that whey protein, in this case isolate, tends to be considered a fast protein, which means that it is digested and absorbed quickly upon ingestion. So the theory is that it should be taken immediately after you work out. Uh, casein protein or milk protein is considered a slow protein, which tends to be recommended um, when you go to sleep because you have a long eight to 12 hour fast if you're lucky. Most people have less. Anyhow, uh, the idea is you continue to digest and absorb protein while you're sleeping. So casein has been considered a slow protein. So what they tend to see is immediately after you work out and your synthesis and breakdown rates are both up, you take a protein shake and you get a greater rise immediately if it's whey or a more prolonged rise if it's casein or egg white protein. That's another one that's considered a slow protein. Um, but how does this translate? So what I, the example I've traditionally given here is, let's say that I have you do five sets of five squats. Your protein synthesis is up, your protein breakdown is up. Now, there are specific measurements that these lab technicians take to measure this. So I'm, right now I'm being very general when I say protein synthesis, protein breakdown. I'm not here to talk about lab techniques. I'm here to kind of put some application to what we're talking about in the context. So you do your five sets of five, Protein synthesis is up, you take a whey protein shake, and uh, it's up even higher. Or you take casein and it's up not quite as high, but higher than baseline for a couple hours. But then you only eat 1,500 calories. Are you going to gain muscle? Probably not, because you're only eating 1,500 calories and you need 4,000 calories. These are just random examples. So what does this really mean? Well, what this really means is that the protein supplement alone isn't what's causing you to build muscle and protein synthesis measurements that are done acutely aren't necessarily predictive of chronic changes because here's another example. Let's say you did eat enough and you took your protein powder right after you worked out, but then you're skipping workouts for a period of three months. Are you going to build muscle? Probably not. So it's all about putting the factors into context. Training is the number one stimulus for muscle growth. So if you're not training, you're not going to gain muscle no matter, you know, what type of protein powder you take, how many BCAAs you take, you know, how many uh, pills in your little pill container you're taking. You got to train. That's number one. This helps if you have trouble getting protein, but you have to train. So back to the academic literature, when I looked into this a little closer, these acute variables that they look at, protein synthesis, protein breakdown measurements, don't correlate well with changes in body composition. So lean mass or muscle volume, if you're doing ultrasound measurements or MRIs, like basically measurements that indicate some sort of change in muscle tissue, whether it be an estimate with lean mass or something a little bit more precise with muscle volume. But um, those outcomes don't correlate well with the acute outcomes because changes in muscle mass are chronic. And then we also don't know what happens with repeated bouts of training. So if you get a higher rise in protein synthesis with whey protein isolate after your workout on workout number one, what happens to workout number two, workout number three, workout number four, workout number five? I mean, we don't know because the way they measure this is very invasive. So 
we don't have any long-term studies on that. But what we do know is if you train over time, you do build muscle. And if you eat enough food, that facilitates that. So rather than worrying so much about optimizing your muscle protein synthesis, just worry about training, show up to the gym, do your sets of five, add a little bit of weight each workout, each week, depending on where you're at. And if you need some extra protein, uh, go ahead and take it. It's not a bad product, but it's not what's driving your gains. The training is what's driving your gains. So keep that in mind. So I hope that helps guide your training decisions and gives you some sense of what you should be doing with your nutrition. You definitely want to eat enough protein. Take protein powder if you have trouble eating enough protein. But don't worry so much about your muscle protein synthesis. Worry about adding weight to the bar. Again, I'm Robert Santana, starting strength coach, registered dietitian. You can find me on the starting strength website on the nutrition and recovery forum where I moderate and answer all your questions. And I hope to see you there soon.